Greetings, guests. Welcome to the Patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking weird science and milk money and how men use women as social currency. Does anyone remember Weird Science? We have to applaud this movie for being so fantastically ahead of its time, like Lisa is basically AI, right? But this was a pretty popular plot back in the day. We are going to discuss Weird Science from 1985 and Milk Money from 1994, plus about adolescent boys seeking mature women to teach them about sex. This archaic storyline does not really exist today. It's basically extinct or retired, however you want to see it. And feel free to let me know if I'm wrong and if you have seen recent titles with a similar plot line. But making movies with this dynamic is way too touchy and borderline inappropriate when things like this actually happen in real life. Milk Money and Weird Science, despite being almost a decade apart, Follow the theme of young clueless boys seeking women to teach them about sexuality and the grown woman's body. Weird Science, which came out in 1985, directed by John Hughes, starring Anthony Michael Hall, Elin Mitchell-Smith, and Kelly LeBrock, is basically a tale of two outcast and socially awkward best friends, 15-year-old Wyatt and Gary, who get absolutely no play with the ladies. Now, traditionally, I would say it's pretty easy to sympathize with the nerdy guy in your typical high school comedy because all of the other surrounding characters are also typically written to be assholes like these two guys. But in Weird Science, specifically Gary's character makes it so hard because he's so pompously grotesque himself. And that sparks another idea entirely about the male nerd trope that I think is worth exploring. So we'll put a pin in that. The film opens up with these two scrawny teenage boys ogling all of the girls at their school while they're in gymnastics class, talking about their fantasies and what they'd like to do with them. And since they don't have any game to do anything themselves, while Wyatt's parents are out of town, inspired after watching Frankenstein, Gary talks Wyatt into using his computer to simulate a girl for initially sex purposes only. You know, we can we can use it, Wyatt. We can ask it questions. We can we can put it in real life sexual situations and see how it reacts. You're like, we're sick to manage shit. You'd love it. They feed the computer a bunch of pictures to create their ideal woman and magically. She's alive. What would you little maniacs like to do first? The first thing that they wish to do with 23 year old Lisa is to see her naked body while cowardly hiding their own. So throughout the duration of the film, many shenanigans occur. They go to a bar where we see Gary completely getting wasted and having this very strange conversation with a table of grown men about the assets of his eighth grade girl crush. They throw this huge party at Wyatt's house. They try to simulate another girl for their bullies and create a rocket instead. And lots of things unfold, which interestingly enough, Gary predicted at the start of the film when talking about his fantasy and this all materializes because of Lisa. So although Lisa is there for quote unquote sexual purposes, which she explicitly states herself at the beginning of the film, she actually ends up teaching Gary and Wyatt so much more. She shows them how to loosen up. She gives them a bit of courage. She builds their self-confidence by constantly affirming them with affirmations like, you made me, you control me. I belong to Gary and Wyatt. I do whatever they say. But most importantly, Lisa provides Gary and Wyatt with clout, social status, and influence. All things that only a woman can do. Just by association with Lisa, now their bullies are no longer their bullies. Now they get the girls that they want, who happened to be the former girlfriends of their former bullies. They basically turned into Mr. Still Your Girl. There is another example of this popularity by proxy concept in Love Don't Cost a Thing, where the nerdy character of Alvin Johnson, played by Nick Cannon, catapults in his high school's social stratosphere simply because Paris, played by Christina Milian, started to date him. 
And this also translates in real life. Women impart so much social status on men simply with their presence. There is a reason that married men in the workplace make more than single men. According to a recent study, about $35,000 more, which is significant. But back to weird science. After Lisa imparts her influence and social status onto them, By the way, there's a party tonight at Wyatt's house. They basically trade her out for the girls that they were crushing on at the beginning of the film. And let's not forget that Lisa is basically a simulation. She's not upset that Gary and Wyatt have girlfriends now. She actually reappears as a gym teacher as the film is concluding, I guess, there to instill confidence in all of the other hopeless, insecure teenage boys at that school. But what does this teach us about relationship dynamics between men and women, aside from the obvious objectification of a woman's body? A, that men will always seek women for status. And yes, there are a litany of other reasons that men seek relationships with women. And these reasons are often sex, cooking, caregiving, child rearing. But we cannot forget the powerful role of influence that women have and can impart on men. B, instead of working on themselves, and okay, we can give Gary and Wyatt some grace as they are teenage boys. But instead of working on themselves, they choose the route of escapism and needed to use a woman for their personal growth journey. They needed Lisa to instill traits of self-confidence, masculinity, responsibility, and respect for themselves and others, especially women. And then C, men will trade you out when you no longer serve them. Like Gary stated, Lisa is everything I wanted in a girl before I knew what I wanted while having pillow talk with his new girlfriend. Let's move on to Milk Money, a romantic comedy that came out in 94, starring Michael Patrick Carter, who played 11-year-old Frank Wheeler, Melanie Griffith, who plays V, and Ed Harris, who plays Frank's father. So Frank and two of his friends are curious about women, and they save up some money to go to the city and find a prostitute with the hopes of seeing a naked lady. Excuse me. Yes? You take your clothes off for $103.62? Oh! They meet V, a prostitute who casually shows the kids her breast. And basically, after finding themselves stranded in the city, V helps them get back home safely to the suburbs, but her car breaks down. And 11 year old Frank offers V his treehouse to sleep in while his dad tries to fix her car. And Frank tries to cover up the fact that she's a prostitute by telling everyone that she's his math tutor. Again, this film also displays themes of young boys using the body of a grown woman as an object as although Frank and V do form a friendship, you can tell that he respects her a lot throughout most of the film. He still shows her off to his peers for nothing more than social clout during this scene where he uses her body to quote unquote teach his classmates about the female reproductive system. This is a woman. These are her breasts. This movie is another example of how proximity to a beautiful woman increases the social status of a male amongst his peers. Hi, Frank. She spoke to me. I speak to her, but she never speaks to me. Showing, once again, the power that a woman can have when it comes to a man's front-facing identity. Yes, internally, but more so how others see him and the world. So what are your thoughts on Weird Science or Milk Money? Are they still making films like this that display this quasi-inappropriate relationship between young boys and grown women? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Also, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you've enjoyed this content and want more of it. Signing off now, your friend Dom.